Now I'm going to kind of start the, our trip down a little bit. Um, context for corporate responsibility at Chevron. So if you think about the world I just described, all right, um, you've got the global policy arena. We have an operating environment uh, around a facility, the, the state maybe, the, where, where uh, you have so certain socioeconomic conditions of a country or uh, and, and certain political conditions. And then you have fence line issues, the, the issues that come right up to your fence, direct impacts on, on, um, on, on the community. Um, and if we, if we manage the fence line issues correctly, and we're going to have safe and reliable operations. Um, if we don't, we could have operational disruptions and delays. If we operate the, uh, manage the operating environment correctly, uh, that is, the socioeconomic and political environment correctly, we'll achieve partner of choice. And if we don't, we're probably going to get sued, and we'll probably have protests, and we'll probably have, um, you know, potentially uh, uh, further disruption of our, of our operations. In the global policy arena, our goal is to be a thought leader on certain key policy uh, uh, elements. And um, we have experienced that if we really step out of the role of being a thought leader, then we have to live with what everybody else comes up with. And that might not be the way uh, we would like to see it, it go, and that could ultimately have some, some impact on our reputation. So that's our, that's our framework for thinking about how we now develop uh, a, a more focused corporate responsibility strategy. So using that model again, sort of that, that broad framework, we ask ourselves two questions on the x-axis. What's the potential impact on business uh, and social value of our operation? And what's our capability to manage those issues? So this becomes a process for us to sort of sift and prioritize the things we're going to focus on in any operation uh, from a corporate responsibility standpoint in any operation around the world. Um, so managing, uh, managing impacts, starting at the center, fence line impacts. We use our social impact assessment process to, uh, to help us um, assess the impacts. We use our ESHA process to, to assess the impacts so we understand them, and then we develop management plans to address those issues. Um, in building capacity in, in uh, the operating environment, these are kind of areas that fall directly out of so I'm, I'm going to come back up. So here's, an, here's a real life example of a fence line issue. We have this, we have this uh, fuel terminal in uh, Manila um, in a, 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 a sort of a suburb called Pandaka. And the, the fourth wall of the homes that the people live with in around our facility is the wall around our facility. So come up to a wall, build three other walls, and that's their house. That's a fence line issue. Um, and that's a serious fence line issue that um, you know, we've been trying to address for, for many, many years in, 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 in Pendaka. Um, but now moving on to um, ca capacity building, this is where we're focused on um, implementing our health, environment, and safety standards on our relationships with our suppliers and how that we're, are their ex we're our ex 